um, there is this, this nice idea of taking different potential functions on the manifold and maybe having a family of them indexed by Q and then looking at the points for Z where the derivative of the potential function times this second function that makes sure that the velocity vector is in the tangent space, when that's zero, but you're not where you want to be, so maybe this set A denotes where you want to be, a certain condition should apply to the family of functions. Actually, this, uh, this subscript Q and this writing it there is the same function, so I guess I should have written it with a subscript everywhere. But basically, Chris said, look, if you had a family of potentials with the property that when this is zero and you're not where you want to be, this quantity is positive, you can build a hybrid feedback to stabilize. And what this quantity being positive just means is that you can find a different value for the logic variable, Q. So Q is going to live in a finite index set. You can find a different value of Q to make the energy smaller than it is right now. So that's what this quantity being positive means, so that you can find a different choice for Q to make the V smaller than it is right now. Chris called this the synergy gap. And just to give you an example, if you're trying to do something on a circle, here's the system, this Z1, Z2, make sure that you live on the circle, and the V is just the angular velocity. And then you'd go back up into that system and say, well, but I'm actually controlling um, not angular velocity, but angular acceleration. Here are two functions, V, that make up a synergistic potential pair where, so think of theta as like the angle on the circle ranging from zero to two pi. So we've got this function that matches up at the endpoints. And we make the potentials have their maximum at two different points. And where the maximum occurs, that's where the derivative is going to be zero. And what we have is that at each one of those points, the other potential function is much smaller than the current potential that we're on. And what that enables you to do is basically say that when you get close to being stuck at a point where you wouldn't be decreasing the potential, you could actually switch to the other potential and follow that potential to where you're wanting to go, which is the zero point or the two pi point. So, this would actually naturally create a hysteresis mechanism where if you started off in, in one particular potential, so set to a certain logic variable, um, let's say you started off here, as, as long as you're far enough away from that peak, you would head down this way and you would head off this way, but if you found yourself close to the peak, you would actually say, well, it's beneficial for me to switch to the other potential and then follow that potential down to where I'm going. And so it introduces, in a very natural, energy-based way, a hysteresis mechanism. Last question. Yeah. So in that case, you have two examples, uh, two possible uh, uh, paths to follow. What if, you, if you have multiple ones, are you uh, worried that you can pick the best one, or are you just picking one which is better? You just pick any one that's better at this point. Yeah. And so, I should mention, so here, this is illustrating it for a circle. Chris has worked out these synergistic potentials on all of these manifolds that I've indicated there, which, uh, which makes this idea quite, quite useful. Um, without going into too much detail, from the assumption, it's very easy to write down the control law. The control law is you put in the negative of that quantity that characterizes the, different, the derivative of the potential. You also put in some stabilizing feedback for the velocity. You have one logic variable, which is Q, that's not going to change during flows. It will jump um, when you reach the, the jump set. The flow and jump set are characterized by the size of the gap. If the gap's small, you flow. If the gap's big, you jump. One thing, actually, about this particular update rule is that the Values you could jump to, and this is related to your question, are not necessarily unique. So this could actually be a set value jump map. And the general theory allows for that, even though I didn't go into that as a description because I didn't want to confuse the issue. But so this particular rule, take this as an energy function, take its derivative along flows and it doesn't increase. Look at how it changes during jumps and it always decreases by this gap delta. 
And then you can apply this invariance principle that I alluded to before to prove that you never get stuck flowing at uh, any, any non-zero condition. You're guaranteed that you'll converge down to where the v's are zero, and then you can't get stuck at v is equal to zero because there's going to be this driving term in the v dot equation, and the only place where that driving um, term can be zero is if you're actually supposed to be jumping rather than flowing because of the assumption about the gap. So anyway, it's hard to describe this in great detail at a level of a seminar like this, but um, I think it's a very powerful concept and one that uh, extends to many interesting systems, um, whether it be satellite pointing, uh, you can use this idea to control a 3D pendulum or a pendulum on a cart. And in addition, you, you buy all of these robustness corollaries that I alluded to earlier that you can implement this, uh, this idea with PWM or with fast actuators. It's going to be robust to small measurement noise. It's going to be robust to slowly varying parameters. All the things that we know about for differential equations are going to apply for hybrid systems as well. So just to wrap things up, hopefully I've captured your attention in terms of the intrigue of hybrid systems. They appear in nature. They appear in engineering. They come up due to control algorithms. They, they are a combination of continuous time and discrete time systems, both continuous variables and, and uh, discrete value variables. We've been able to um, ex, um, push to the hybrid world many of the analysis tools that we rely on for differential equations when we devise um, classical nonlinear control algorithms. And hybrid feedback can solve problems that cannot be solved with classical feedback. Um, most significantly, problems where topological constraints would automatically rule out robust feedback um, that achieves certain objectives globally. Um, those problems can be solved with hybrid feedback. Well, thank you very much for your attention, and there may be time for questions. sequence of vectors converges to a certain vector. You're talking about a sequence of sets and whether that sequence of sets converges to a, a well, it's going to converge to a set under very mild properties like it is into a set where all the points go unbounded. And the question is whether the set that it converged to, converges to is actually the graph of a solution to the original system. So the notion of set convergence is fairly well developed and, and parallels what's known for convergence of vectors. Um, but this is convergence of sets. And then the, the kind of the, the non-trivial result is to show that if, if, if you identify the graph for each solution in the sequence, the set that you converge to for the subsequence is actually, again, a graph of a function that's a solution. But otherwise, the convergence is similar. It's just set convergence versus vector. Uh, if I just you correctly, in that example which you showed, uh, which you already so developed, uh, so uh, if I understood you correctly, uh, the idea is that to follow this strategy until you understand that you, you, you get stuck and then change the strategy. Right? Now, uh, uh, you uh, change it in a way that your W function, if I remember correctly, uh, decreases. Mm -hmm. But W, is I understood, it's kind of local uh, function. So are there any situation when, in, in fact, you need to go to the worst situation, you need to increase W, 
so that eventually you would uh, come to the point which you like. Okay. Well, no, and I'm not sure exactly what you mean by a local function, but this function is measuring, in essence, our, our energy away from where we're trying to be. And this family of synergistic potentials has the property that it's zero only where we want to be, and it's positive otherwise. Yes. And if we can drive this function to zero, we're going to know that we're where we want to be. Um, this will have to be zero, the velocity will have to be zero, and we'll be, have to be at the point we're trying to go to on the circle. This guarantees that whenever we jump, w gets smaller, and this guarantees that whenever we flow, except in the case where v is equal to zero, w is also decreasing. So the only thing that could possibly happen is that we get stuck at w equal to some constant that's not zero, that's consistent with the velocity being zero. That's the only thing that can go wrong. But the reason why that doesn't happen is because if you look at the v dot equation in the closed loop, it's v dot is equal to this expression minus this one. And if we're getting stuck where v is zero, that means this is already zero. And to stay at v is equal to zero, this would have to be equal to zero as well. But this, the assumption on the previous slide was that when that was zero and we weren't where we wanted to be, this quantity was actually bigger than delta which means that we would have to be in this condition where we jump, we would no longer be in the condition where we could flow, which means that we can't get stuck flowing with W not changing. So what that's going to tell you is that even we can go, th we can go through points where W is not decreasing, but we'll never get stuck at any point. So W will trend towards zero, certainly when it jumps, it will have big jumps towards zero, and we'll guarantee that W will actually go all the way to zero, which is telling us we're going to go but so basically, it's only in the case when you, you uh, there is such a uh, jump which uh, decreases your W. Well, and so the point of synergistic potentials, and it's not always trivial to find them. So we we haven't found them generically, but we found them for a lot of interesting manifolds. Oh, I see. So, so the you, key you just, thing about a synergistic key. potential is to be able to find a family of V's that has this property that when you would get stuck, there's a new V that decreases. And, and what Chris has done in a lot of his work is work out what synergistic potentials would look like for these different manifolds. I see. So you, basically you're saying if this property is satisfied, then everything is fine. Right. And so you spend your work at the, header, at, at the beginning to find the synergistic potentials. And once you have them, then building the feedback algorithm, the hybrid feedback algorithm is straightforward. Questions? Not quite on the if in financial engineering, it happens often that you have continuous and discontinuous situations. Have you come across any problems in this one? Like twice in derivatives, yeah. it's a diffusion equation, and right. then you have jumps. Right. Of the dividends and so I thought, is, do you know any? Um, yeah, so I haven't studied that area, but. Um, but I, yeah, I think there's a big body of literature on that. There's, there's a whole body of literature on stochastic hybrid systems that uh, I think also comes into play there. Um, most of the time, though, again, some of the issues that I've camped out on don't show up in that body of literature for whatever reasons. Maybe those properties aren't that important in those settings, um, but they turn out to be very important what we do. And, and I've started to look at stochastic hybrid systems to see the degree to which